Hey everybody, Aaron here. Today, I'm going to be talking about building at a large scale. Now, when I say scale, I don't necessarily mean just building something that's enormous, huge dimensions, lots of inches, centimeters, pounds, whatever you want to measure the build in. I'm talking about building at a different scale than minifigure scale. I think we're all pretty familiar with the Lego minifigure. Here's minifig me, by the way. A lot of Lego elements are built in scale for a minifigure or designed that way. My minifigure may have a little water bottle here that's perfectly sized to him. That's in his scale. But let's say I want to make something a little bit larger. Big water bottle like this. This is uh, close to being about half scale to a person. So it's much, much larger than the minifigure scale and uh, requires a different set of skills and a different set of uh, perspectives. I built this set of uh, climbing equipment as a gift for a friend and built it in a bigger than minifigure scale, as you can clearly see. We already looked at the water bottle, which makes use of some of these big window pieces to become the rounded shape of the water bottle. I've also used some gears, which with their ridged edges, make for a really good unscrewable looking water bottle cap. The flashlight here is built out of 2x2 two two round bricks with a bit of a flare at the front using a cone for the beam emitter of the flashlight. And I can make use of a fun minifigure string to keep this hooked onto a belt or some other structure. One of my favorite details on this macro scale collection of models is the compass, which uses a really old 1990s functional Lego compass element in its core. This part while having been kind of comically oversized for a minifigure, actually works great for this scale here. That's one of the other fun things you can do with a macro scale, is make things feel a little bit more accurate to life. Makes a perfect pocket compass for navigating the wilderness. The carabiners use some macaroni style parts to create that curvature. I did have some difficulty making these carabiners, but I think that the rounded appearance was about as good as I could get given the parts and the size that I was going for here. One of my favorite models of this set is the Ice Axe, which uses some old school metallic style Lego parts to give it that sheen, that veneer that makes it seem like it's made out of steel. One of the trickiest parts of this submodel to get right was the slight angle of the shaft up here. To make that happen, I've actually used some hinging plates and a brick with stud on one side which perfectly spaces out and creates this angle right here. Macro scale can be applied to all different kinds of stuff, not just climbing equipment. Some of my favorite of my larger scale models that I've designed are these pair of fire and ice elemental dragon busts, which have opening mouths, movable necks, and some really cool horns. The horns of the dragons are actually made out of old dinosaur tails. Generally speaking, it's easier to manage and accomplish complex color schemes at a larger scale as well. There's a bit more room to play. When I'm working on a dragon this large, I can manage the gradient from red to dark red to orange to tan with a lot more room to play, just based on the size of the canvas, so to speak. Same thing over here with this ice dragon, giving it those pale hues and making a really deliberate pattern is easier to do at a macro scale too. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my little discussion about the virtues of building in macro scale. If you're interested in uh, replicating these two dragon busts, instructions for them are available at aaronbrickdesigner.com store. And if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe and uh, look out for more videos like this in the future. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time.